Hi folks, this is Travis here at Set Apart Homestead. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about Frankenstein fruit today. Had a viewer uh, named Cindy, I believe, asked that I would bring this up in one of my videos. And I thought I would. Um, you know, it is important where our food comes from, what you take into your body. You want to be healthy. Um, you know, look at it for an SHTF. Uh, you want to be as healthy as you can to get through that. You know, you may have all kinds of food and gear and everything, but if you yourself aren't healthy and fit, you know, you're going to have a struggle. Uh, from a homesteading perspective and a biblical perspective, um, we like to try to keep things as natural as we can, uh, provide for our own, you know, selves, our own food sources as much as possible because uh, so much of what is out there is really contaminated. It's certainly not natural. It's not the way God intended it to be. Um, genetically modified organisms, I, I think, is, you know, kind of the beginning of that, really. Uh, it's, it's only going to get worse. I mean, you know, they're now talking about synthetic meat, uh, you know, a lot deeper gene splicing, you know, taking, you know, mice and pigs and feces and things like that and, and splitting them and mixing them together for something totally different. So what we're seeing uh, in the way of, like, genetically modified corn and soybean and sugar beets and stuff like that, it, to me, that's just, it's just kind of the beginning. Um, and it's a pretty scary thing. You know, after everything hits the fan and you know, you don't have those labs, you may not, you may still. Um, you know, there's also the problem of if you're trying to grow food and your, your seeds and your plants have been contaminated with those, there's a possibility that they won't reproduce. Uh, it's possible that those seeds won't germinate. So uh, there's that to take into. That's why we try to, here we try to stick with heirloom seeds as much as possible so that we can, uh, you know, collect our seeds and and you know, grow them again next year. Now I know that there's an argument, and I see this all the time, and it frustrates me to no end that, you know, there's no big deal with GMOs because humans have been doing that for centuries. We've been, you know, creating hybrids and, and uh, you know, mixing two plants together and mixing, you know, breeding animals and selective breeding and all that, and that's all it is. No, that's a lie. That's not all it is. Um, you know, when I take two plants, not that I do it, um, I've act actually I have, but it's not something I do that often. I tried it out a couple of times. When you take two plants and you cross pollinate them to create a new variety, you're taking two similar plants. They have enough commonality between the two plants that they're able to reproduce in a natural way. You're just mixing them, cross pollinating them, and creating a a slightly hybrid version of the two parent plants. It's the same way with, you know, breeding dogs. You're selectively breeding uh, dogs to come up with either a different breed or an improved breed. Cattle, you know, you go on and on. The point is, is that the two original, you know, parents that you've bred, they have to have enough common genetic DNA material you know, they have to be within the same family for it to work because it's it's a natural process. You're just, you're kind of helping that natural process is what you're doing. If you guys hear the popping, I don't know if I showed you. I do have a fire, so if you hear that. It's something that humans have been doing just about forever uh, of crossbreeding and, and, and selectively breeding and selectively pollinating uh, plants. That's not the same as genetically modifying. Um, I am not a scientist in any way, but I do understand it. So if you want to get on here and claim that I'm wrong, um, I'll take you on on that. But but I'm telling you, it's not the same. There is a major difference between taking two types of plants within the uh, Asteraceae family, which is a botanical family, and cross-pollinating them to create a new breed of plant. There's a difference between that and taking genetic material of a pig, 
bacteria from the feces of, say, a cat, um, a particular fish, and uh, genetic material from a fish, and genetic material from a tomato, and creating a whole new something. There's a major difference with that. You are manipulating genes on the you know, molecular level, and it's not natural to begin with. And it's still such a new uh, technology. The smoke's going after me now. It's still such a new technology that we truly can't know just yet of the repercussions of that ingesting that kind of stuff as a food. Uh, you know, the first uh, genetically modified foods really only came onto the market in the early 90s. Um, and there's claims now that, oh, well, you know, they've been out for 20, 30, you know, 20 plus years, almost 30 years now, uh, they are safe. I think that's bunk. There's 60 some countries now that either ban or require labeling of genetically modified foods. Um, there are, uh, you know, there's lots of research indicating that there could be pro problems with it. There's research indicating that, you know, if a cow eats gene genetically modified food, that it, it that those genes transfer into the cow itself to the meat, as, and then we eat that, uh, much in the same way that, uh, you know, the, if you give uh, cattle hormones, it can be transferred into the humans that's eating it. Uh, there, there's so much uncertainty that. Um, Big, big corporate businesses were pushing it because they knew they could make money off of it. It was the same, you know, thing, just new technology and to a different level of when uh, pharmaceuticals first came out. You know, I mentioned that in another video that, uh, you know, originally doctors, you know, actual medical doctors, um, the, the medicines that they prescribed were mostly plant-based. You know, the pharmacists would actually mix them. They were, you know, in a sense, an herbalist. Um, and some of them were man-made products, yes, but they were all mixed together to create that. And then when, you know, pharmaceutical companies really started catching on that they could manufacture synthetic, you know, medicine and patent it and make buku bucks more than just selling, you know, a herb in a tincture, that's when they started pushing for that. And it's the same way with this. Um, companies like Monsanto realize that they can make insane amounts of money compared to using traditional hybrid or heirloom seeds. Uh, you know, the, these seeds uh, only work with their pesticides and herbicides. Uh, these seeds many times will not, you can't harvest uh, portions of your crop to, as, to save seeds back because many times they do, will not germinate on their own. Um, they, they, you know, are working to create a monopoly in this system and it's it's devastating farmers that's why there's hardly any small farmers anymore um, this area that we live in uh, southern Missouri northern Arkansas you do, do still find a few but most of the small farmers are are farming um, certain crops or animals that haven't yet really been touched by uh, you know companies like Monsanto um, most of the crops that are grown that, that they control, they're all big corporate farms. Um, they shut them out. There's documentaries. Uh, get on, I think, probably Netflix. Netflix. Sorry, my tongue is all twisted up today. Um, if you have Netflix, I'm pretty sure there are some, um, or YouTube maybe, there's some documentaries uh, that show what they're doing to these farmers, you know. Uh, if you don't know, and I suspect a lot of you already know this, probably pre preaching to the choir, but, you know, you've got Farmer A, and he's he's growing Monsanto, you know, GMO corn, and you've got Farmer B over here, and, and he's just growing regular old hybrid corn that he bought, you know, and it's, you know, just whatever. It's not patented. This is patented. They own the patent on that, and you have to sign a contract that you, you know, you'll only grow their corn, you'll only sell, all this kind of stuff. It's a, It's an actual contract. Whereas this guy, he just goes down to the feed store, the seed store, and he buys his corn, and it's his stuff, and he can do what he wants to with it, and he can sell it however he wants. Then what happens, because corn 
is pollinated through the air. It's just an airborne, uh, you know, it's how, how it pollinates. This GMO corn ends up pollinating some of this guy's corn over here. And then Monsanto comes into this guy that doesn't have a contract with him says, Hey, you, some of your corn has, you know, strains of our genetically modified corn that we own a patent on. And we're going to sue the pants off of you. And it, the courts are, it's absolutely absurd but the courts say, hey, you know, we don't care that it's, you know, an impossibility to stop the pollen from this corn blowing over here to this corn. That's not the issue. We couldn't care less about that. The fact is you've got patented Monsanto corn in your field, so we're shutting you down. And that's what they're doing. Um, you're, you know, like I said, there's all sorts of, of documentaries out there and information, credible information showing this. Um, and then in the end, we're producing food that uh, is, is poor quality, uh, and we don't yet even know, because it's been so soon of producing this, we don't know the, the long-term ramifications of eating this kind of junk. Um, it's something to consider in your preparation. Sorry, I'm getting jiggly on the camera here. It's something to consider with your preparations. It's very difficult. I've looked into it. It's very difficult to find uh, non-GMO-free uh, uh, foods uh, that work well for preps. Uh, freeze drieds there are a few, I believe, companies, uh, or at least I've, they may not be companies, but I've seen a few buckets advertised as you know, GMO-free. Uh, things like corn, which is something that you can you know, put up, it's most likely going to be genetically modified. Uh, it's something like 90% of all the corn that is eaten in America, I think, I think it's in that, that level, um, has, you know, genetic, is genetically modified. Um, I saw another study that 85% of all food in the grocery stores have some sort of genetically modified ingredient in them. 85%. Uh, it's just astronomical. Probably the other 15% are specifically, you know, non-GMO created, you know, brands that these, these, all natural organic brands so it's it's almost like everything in a grocery store has some kind of uh, genetically modified uh, ingredient in it you know is it really going to kill us is it going to turn us all into Frankensteins I don't know but it's you know I think like I said it's too early to tell uh, there has been evidence showing that um, some of this stuff can be carcinogenic um, not just the the fact that the the plant is genetically modified but it's genetically modified so that they can use particular uh, pesticides on it and so they're using more pesticides because the plant can handle it they won't kill the plant it'll just kill everything else or herbicides and so there's an increased amount of chemicals being put on your plants on your food because the plants now are genetically modified so that they can dump all this you know crap on the plant now and it won't kill the food it'll just kill everything else um, it's really interfering with you know how God created a balance um, and this doesn't really matter whether you believe in God the Bible or you know whatever well you know some new age frou-frou stuff it doesn't matter any person that spends any time out in nature can see that there is a balance in nature that everything you know it, there's a balance and purpose there um, and so I personally don't care right now what you how you believe you know if it's by the hand of God or just some um, you know by chance happening but the point is that, that there is a balance um, and we know this uh, more and more uh, through scientific study of how um, our bodies absorb food, how uh, other animals' bodies absorb food and absorb the nutrients, you know. Uh, for instance, you can take a, a, a multivitamin or you can eat an orange and it may have the exact same amount of, uh, you know, mine just went blank, but it, it could have the same uh, amount of vitamins in them, but your body is going to absorb the vitamins in that orange more than it's going to absorb in that, that multivitamin because your body knows that it's food as, as opposed to that multivitamin. It knows that it's not food, that it's, it's fake, so you're not getting as much. Th these are things that we're finding out more and more um, about our system, and yet then we turn around and we're saying, well, we're going to create this synthetically modified uh, gene splice DNA twisted uh, abomination basically and we're gonna sell it to you and sell, tell you it's okay 
And I know a lot of people are saying, well, well, wait a minute, are you going overboard? We're talking about corn that they have added a particular bacteria to it so that they can use, you know, this Roundup Ready. That's basically what it is. That's the start to what it is. They're already, you know, they're, they're already talking about the possibility of of uh, lab created meat being on the on the market soon. Um, there's um, uh, up in, and I know new to Torah, uh, Zach uh, Bauer. If you guys want to go over to his channel, um, he did a really good uh, video on. Uh, what do you call it, the chimera pig or something like that, where they're taking like a pig and E. coli bacteria and a mouse or a rat or something like that, the genes of all those, and they're mixing them. They're coming up, coming up with something, you know, com almost completely different. Um, this stuff has been going on for a while, and, and I, I think we're... Um, it's kind of that move, that quote way back in the original Jurassic Park. I can't even remember the guy's name, the actor. But he says, you know, just because we can doesn't mean we should. I don't believe for one moment that this is being done to improve our life. It's being done to make some money. That's it. Um, it it's all, all it is. Well, my camera's telling me I'm running out of battery space or memory space. I need to get off of here. I might pick this up in another video soon, uh, if there's enough response. I'm sorry to just cut it off, but it's telling me I've got a few seconds left before it cuts me off. I should have checked that first before I started. Alright, um, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. If you guys seem to like this enough, maybe I'll shoot another one to, to carry on since I'm getting cut off of here. Sorry about that. It's kind of embarrassing.